is an emanation from him, the Mahavishnu or Mahasamasti. Nothing of the cosmic energies is different from him, but all such expanded energies have specific functions and display as designed by the Lord, and therefore they are simultaneously different from the Lord. The living entities are also similar energy, marginal potency of the Lord, and thus they are simultaneously one with and different from Him. At the stage of non-manifestation, the, the living energies remain potent in the Lord, and when they are let loose in the cosmic manifestation, they are exhibited differently in terms of different desires under the modes of nature. Such differential manifestations of the living energies are conditional states of the living entities. The liberated living entities, however, in the Sanatan, eternal manifestation, are unconditional, surrendered souls, and therefore they are not subject to the conditions of creation and annihilation. So this creation takes place by the glance of the Lord from his bedstead of mystic slumber, and thus all the universes and the Lord of the universe, Brahma, are again and again manifested and annihilated. Om 
Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadaka Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Sukadeva Goswami is describing the process of creation to Maharaj Pariksha. Maharaj Pariksha, of course, is preparing for his death. Conscious that he's only got a very short time left to live. And he wants to hear about the pastimes of the Lord. And one of the primary pastimes of the Lord is how he creates the material world. This is called Shristi Tattva. Shristi Tattva means the process of creation. So the primary creation is done by Lord Vishnu and then the secondary part is done by Lord Brahma. Mm -hmm. But Lord Vishnu who is initiating the process of creation. He carries the at the, at the time of annihilation, all the living entities enter into the body of Garbhadak's members. Lord Vishnu is in three features. You have the Mahavishnu, you have the Garbhadak Vishnu and the Shiradaka Vishnu. And they're all Vishnu, but they're performing, Lord Vishnu is performing different functions. Hmm. Well, you've got the initial Mahavishnu laying in the Kaja Ocean and the universe is coming out from his body. And then you've got Garbhadakashai Vishnu is the Lord Vishnu who expands into the heart. Garbhadakashai Vishnu enters into each and every universe. And from the perspiration from his body, he makes the ocean in the bottom of the universe. And then he lays down on that ocean, on that ocean, and from his navel, the lotus flower comes and Lord Brahma takes birth. And then you have Garbhagatachai Vishnu's next expansion is Shirodakachai Vishnu, who is a super soul in the heart of all living entities. So God Shirodakashai Vishnu, he is also saying in the, on the, the, on the, in the middle of the milk ocean there's the island of Sweta Dweep and Mahavishnu resides there. So Lord Vishnu is very busy in the work of creation. So the creation takes place for when the lifetime of Lord Brahma, at the end of the life of the Lord Brahma, then there's the annihilation. But there's also partial annihilation takes place at the end of Brahma's day. So 
So sometimes the devotees that sometimes we're hearing about a partial annihilation, sometimes we hear about the total annihilation. Partial annihilation means the lower planets in the universe. Lower planets means also this planet Earth. This is also a, this is in the middle of the universe. This is also annihilated at the end of the day of Brahma. Okay. The higher planets, uh, they remain undisturbed. Higher planets means the planet like where Lord Brahma resides at the top of the universe, Satya Loka. And then there's also Tapa Loka, where the four Kumaras live. Then there's also Janaloka and Mahaloka, where great sages are living. So these upper planets, four upper planets, they remain throughout the, day, the whole life of Brahma until the end of the life of Brahma. So Sweta Dweep is where Lord Vishnu resided. That's a spiritual planet, which but it's within the universe. So it's a, it, it's a, the, the partial annihilation which takes place. That is only the 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 bu, buva loka bu bu like we're bu mandala. Bhu Loka and Bhuvar Loka, where, where these regions are all destroyed at the end of the day of Brahma. And spiritual planets like Sri Dweep, they remain even at the end of the life of Brahma, it's never annihilated because it's a spiritual planet. So sometimes it's manifest and sometimes it's not manifest, but it's always, it's eternally existing. So it is Just like uh, Sometimes the planets will be visible, and other times it won't be visible. And when the end of the life of Brahma comes, then the whole, unit, the whole material universe is destroyed. But Sweta Dweep just becomes un unmanifest. And then when the creation takes place again, then it again manifests. So this way creation and annihilation are going on continually. You've got partial creation take at the beginning of the life of Brahma, you've got the full creation taking place. And then you've got partial annihilation coming at the end of every day of Brahma. And you've got total annihilation taking place at the end of the life of Brahma. So, and it said also at every moment there is annihilation. Because it's a material energy, it's a large energy, it's temporary. 
temporarily manifest, but at the same time it is eternal. Just like now, you see here in Malacca, there are so many buildings. So in the past there were no there were no buildings. Now there are so many buildings, but in the future they will all be annihilated. So it's the nature of the material world. It's the Lord's prakriti, it's his energy, it's eternal, but it's not eternally manifest. Sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not. We have to understand it's the Lord's energy. It's one with the Lord, but at the same time different from the Lord. So one and different. This is the teaching given to us by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That everything is simultaneously, inconceivably one with the Lord, but at the same time different from the Lord. So one, oneness is here, just like we are living entities, we are one with the Lord, we are also spiritual. We are one in that sense, in the sense that we are spiritual, but at the same time we are different from the Lord. We are one in quality, different in quantity. And everything in this world is of that nature, one and different. In this way we understand the material creation. The Mayavadis and the Buddhists, they say this world is all false. They say Maya Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. Brahman means spirit is truth, but the jagat, the material world, is false. This is what the Mayavadis say. And the Buddhists will say the world is not real, it's just illusion. But nothing is real. But we say, no, the world is real, but at the same time it is temporary. We give the example just like the clay pot. The clay pot in the form of a pot, it can hold water. But then the pot breaks and broke into pieces. The pieces of the pot still exist. And the pieces of the pot, they can be transformed again to make some other object. In this way, we understand everything to be one and different from the Lord. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, his teaching is to bring together the teachings of all the Vaishnavas. That everyone should understand the eternal relationship between the Lord and the living entity. Bhagavad Gita said, Mami Vamsa Jiva Loki Jiva Buddha Sanatana. The living entities are all eternal parts and parcel of the Lord. Mami Vamsa Jiva Loki Jiva Buddha Sanatana. 
We're not equal to the Lord, but we're one in quality. We're also spiritual in nature. But we can fall under the material energy and we forget our spiritual position. So Krishna consciousness is to bring us out of that forgetfulness to remind us of our real position. Okay, any question? Yes. No, when there's total annihilation, the total at the time of the end of the life of Brahma, then the upper planets are also annihilated. But there's one planet, Sweta Dweep. Sweta Dweep is a spiritual planet. It's a Vaikuntha planet within the material realm. So that is not annihilated, but it becomes unmanifested. But the upper planets like Brahmaloka and Janaloka, Tapaloka, they are all annihilated at the end of the life of Brahma. So the upper planet, see, at the end of the day of Brahma, they remain. And, and you get great sages. When the lower planets are annihilated at that time, the sages will go up to the upper planets to take shelter in the upper planets. Because the heat from the fire of devastation, and it, 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 it becomes so hot, everything is burning, so the cities will go up to the top of the universe to get away from the heat. Yeah. Um, this In the words, it was saying such differential, such differential manifestations of the living energies are conditional states of the living entities. So my question is, how does the wheel of karma starts rolling? Is it because when the Lord creates, when He created the living entity, the jivas, He embed them with like different desires and then they start their own karmas. Um what about the question in this world he has mentioned that uh different energies uh the different energies different well, everybody, living entities are all eternal. Bhagavad Gita says, Najayate Mriyate Vatajata. There's no birth and there's no death. The living entities are all eternal spiritual beings. They're not created. But sometimes living entities will fall from the spiritual world or that somehow they will not be properly situated in their spiritual position. 
they'll be in a condition of forgetfulness of Krishna. And so at that time they have different desires. As soon as they desire to forget Krishna or to rebel against Krishna, then they immediately come into the material world. At that time then you start to get karma, you accumulate your different reactions, uh, the, the things, the thoughts are there in the mind, the desire to enjoy and to exploit. Sometimes it's said when you first come to the material world, you take position of Brahma, you get a big position way at the top of the universe. But sometimes, you, you, often in that position, you're just simply enjoying, just simply thinking, I'm the Lord. Brahma sometimes forgets that he's the servant. Yeah, he forgets his position. Is sometimes he says to Narada Muni that sometimes I think I'm the master. I forget my position. So you get a big position in the universe. It doesn't mean that you're a pure devotee, but uh, often you 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 do. Become more and more attached to enjoying, and then you fall down and go down and down. So we are called Nityabhadas, eternally conditioned souls, meaning we've been in the material world a very long time. So we have a lot of uh, things in our heart from the past, different desires and uh, thoughts, ambitions, and sinful activities, karma, it's all there with us from many, many lifetimes. So we can be liberated from all of that by devotional service. Devotional service burns up all the past reactions. But we can remain in the material world continually performing activities under the law of karma. We just simply remain, take birth again and again, go up and down through all the different species of life. So that's the con conditioned soul. They just remain taking birth and dying again and again and go through all the different species of life. Sometimes you go all the way up to the higher planets and sometimes you go right down to the hellish planets. So in the lower species of life, people take birth again and again, suffering miserable conditions.
是这个水对法，水对法是宁静星球，它即使是布拉玛正寝的时候，它都不毁灭，它有时展示，有时不展示，它的位置在哪？ She want to ask, uh, well, where, what's the location of Shweta Dweep? Well, Shweta Dweep is a pole star, but all the planets are circumambulating around it. Uh, Shweta Dweep is just the Earth, and all the planets are circumambulating around it. Mm -hmm. You can read the fifth canto. Tells you about the structure of the universe. You can see the pole star every night. You can see the pole star. So I said all the planets are rotating around that pole star. Okay. Any other questions? Just now you mentioned that the old sages at the partial annihilation they will go to the highest uh, planet. But what about our destination? Although we are uh, doing devotional service, but there are different levels of devotional service. Well, you have to get ready to go back to Godhead. <laughs> the demigods also want to be here. This is the best place to get out. This is the easiest place. You can go directly back to Godhead from this planet. It's not too heavenly, uh, not too hellish. We're right in the middle of the universe. And because it's Kali Yuga, you can go back to Godhead just by chanting the holy name. We have to get develop our taste for the holy name. And go back to God. Okay. Hare Krishna.